Welcome friends to another r slash pro revenge video. Our first story of the day is by Nomad65555. Hurt Mr. Y? I'll pick apart everything you do. This happened last year in my junior year of high school. I was a teacher's aide for the construction class, as I had finished the course and had to fill the space in my schedule. The teacher, Mr. Y, was awesome, and genuinely one of the best teachers I've ever had. The class was mostly learning how to use a drafting program called AutoCAD. There was one student who, at the time, was a freshman who would work for five minutes and then watch anime for the rest of the class. Mr. Y had given up and seemed hurt at his lack of interest. That's when the gloves came off. Nobody hurts Mr. Y. I approached Mr. Y after class one day and asked him permission to enact my plan. And with a chuckle, he approved. Cue petty revenge. The next day, when Lazy Kid pulled out his phone to watch anime, I walked behind him with our other teacher's aide. The other aide and I began to point out every minute, incorrect detail about his drawing. I say, that's meant to be a four-inch offset. You did three. The other aide says, your bathroom isn't studded. I say, your outlets are one inch too far apart according to state building codes. The aide says, can you go to Lowe's.com and find that door for me? I think it's an inch too wide. I say, where's the gutter on your roof? This went on for 20 minutes. Note, we made him use the dimension tool on any measurements we thought were incorrect, so we weren't just guessing distances. Eventually, the kid got upset because every time we pointed something out, he would fix it for us only to point something else out. This guy was apparently competitive, so from that day forward, just to prove a point, he sat down at the beginning of class and worked ruthlessly until the bell rang. He was actually really talented at it when he applied himself. Every day, the guy would call me and the other aide over to look at his work, and every day we found one imperfection, until eventually, he actually enjoyed the class. He thought he won by proving us wrong when, in reality... He ended up doing his work, which was what me and the other aide and Mr. Y wanted from the beginning. It's really cool to hear about what OP and the other teacher's aide did that ended up making this kid actually really enjoy AutoCAD. If you found out that in class you could put in a little extra effort and cause another kid to get really involved and enjoy that class, would you want to go out of your way to do that every single day you had that class? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next story is by Mr. Unknown0501. My friends thought I had sold them out in DayZ. My friends and I were playing DayZ, and the server we were in had a group of jerks. I spent most of the time off doing my own thing, and I guessed that the jerks of the server had done something at their base. And the main jerk had told them that I was a rat and sold them out. So instead of stopping to think that maybe the main jerk was trying to cause division, they believed him. So the fact they think I would have done that, and how they acted about it, pissed me off. I had known where their base was at, so I had waited until about 1 in the morning and appear offline. Logged on, spent like half an hour trying to get to their base. When I had got there, I saw they had four cars and one supply truck, so I had taken the wheels and spark plugs of their cars, put them in the truck, and drove it into the water. So your friends had this beautiful base and the other main jerk managed to cause division in that beautiful base and kind of outcasted you in a way. And in the end, OP feels like they got some revenge, but the main jerk got away in the end. They did divide OP and their friends. But honestly, waiting until 1 in the morning to raid a base is probably the best encapsulation of what DayZ was. Our next story is by the real Omega Vince. He told me I just have to deal with him, so I did. I work in a corner store. As expected when working at a corner store, there are a lot of thieves that we need to deal with. Most of them are told to leave and don't come back. Some come back after a few months, but they don't steal anymore. But one man decided to be different. This guy is probably about 70 or older and comes in every day and steals something every time he's in. When confronted about it, he simply admits he stole and expects to be let off with no punishment. One day, the boss caught him red-handed and told him he's not allowed back in. A couple days later, he came back to apologize and said he won't do it again if he can still come in. So the boss agreed, but he printed out a sheet and told everybody to write down the times he comes in, so the boss can look at it later. 
About a week goes by, and sure enough, the boss confirms with us that he's still stealing when he comes in, and instructed us to tell him he's not allowed on the property anymore. So we did. About ten times. We were denying him service at this point, but he kept trying to use the ATM inside the store. We repeatedly told him he's not allowed, but we never really enforced it because we were usually busy and he would be gone by the time we had a minute to do something about him. He would usually say something like, I'm still not allowed, or I'll just be a minute. One day he comes in and I immediately tell him loudly and clearly that he's not allowed in, and if he doesn't leave, I'm calling the cops. He told me, you'll just have to deal with me. So I called the cops and asked him what his name was, and he ran out the door before I was done on the phone. This wasn't over yet. Using the information I had about his browsing patterns in the store, I made a plan. I waited patiently for the day to come when he would come into the store when there was nobody else in the store but me, and I had no other obligations. Today was my lucky day. Today he came in and went straight to the ATM, so I immediately told him to get out now or I'm calling the cops. I locked up the safe and shut all the doors and locked them, then went outside and locked the store from the outside with him stuck inside. I then called the non-emergency police line and they sent two units to write up a file stating that if he comes back, he will be fined and possibly arrested. I told the police officer that we kicked him out like 10 times, and he told me, you'll just have to deal with me, so I did just that. The police ended up charging him with trespassing because he's on parole. You definitely don't know all of what's going on here, but there's definitely a part of me that feels kind of bad for the guy, although he is stealing and trespassing all the time. I feel like it's pretty clear that he's probably dealing with some kind of serious issue. What it is, it's not really my place to speculate, but a 70-year-old guy doing all this stuff repeatedly, it's just kind of sad to see. Our next story is by Emerald Phoenix 525 Taught a food thief a lesson. I worked at a small company with approximately 35 employees. We had a good-sized kitchen with a fridge that several employees used, though most brought a lunch bag they just kept by their desk. The fridge was usually used for stuff that people wanted to keep really cold, or for drinks. People often would go to the fridge to either find their whole lunch missing or an item from it gone or, in my case, my can of cherry coke. I usually kept it in my lunch bag, but on occasion when I would order out, I would get two, one for lunch and one for later, so I didn't have my lunch bag. We suspected who was stealing it but could never prove it. But this particular day, I was in the mood and I figured I would try and prove it. It was Karen's break time and I headed down to the kitchen about 5 minutes ahead and gave my coke a really, really hard shake. So hard, I feared it may actually pop in my hands and placed it back in the fridge. Then, I ducked into the storage closet that was in the kitchen and peeked out the crack. Bingo! She took the coke... I waited hand over my mouth for her to open it, but she took it with her and left. Oh crap, I thought she was going to open it in the hall. Nope. As I left the kitchen, I hear her yell, What the freak? As I passed her office, coke was everywhere. The walls, the floor, the ceiling, all over her desk and computer, and her work all over her everywhere. More importantly, the previous week, we were all given these sippy-type cups that were spill-proof that we were supposed to use at our desks when drinking because we all got new computers. Well, food never went missing again because she got fired. Is it the potential ruining of the computers that got her fired, or is it the irrefutable proof that she stole from co-workers? This is one of life's greatest mysteries we may never know. Actually, in the comments, OP said that they got fired for both of those offenses. This next story is by Futile Psycho. Don't talk crap about minimum wage employees who are just doing what they're mandated to do. So I'm a photographer at a popular tourist attraction. When you come in, you get a free photo included with your ticket in front of a green screen, and you can pick from several backgrounds later. A lot of people skip the photo because they 
don't want to take a picture in a mask. It's cool if they politely continue, but a lot of people make rude remarks, roll their eyes, etc. as if I, a 21-year-old girl, made the mask mandate or something. A large group of Russian people come in. I recognized it immediately because my mom is Russian and speaks fluently, but she never taught me, but that's a different story anyway. The group isn't social distancing at all, not giving the group in front of them any space. They're not interested in a photo, so they're trying to walk past, but I explain they have to wait, as does my coworker. They start rolling their eyes, and I could feel it in my bones that they were saying nasty things about us. So, I looked over at my coworker and said, I want ice cream, perfectly fluent in Russian. And they all looked at me as if they were about to mess their pants. This might not be the ultimate form of revenge, but knowing that they thought I understood everything they said about me was more than enough to make me happy. Wear your mask, folks. Or if you don't like wearing a mask, maybe don't come to highly populated tourist attractions and be passive-aggressive to the employees. We're just trying not to get fired. The top comment on this post says, I want to learn how to say, you should be careful what you say, you never know who might be listening, in 20 or 30 languages. And I think that's exactly what I would love to do. Anywhere somebody's talking in Spanish or German or Russian, you think they're talking crap about you? You can just lean over and go, you don't know who might be listening, give them a nice little scare. Our next story is by Replica7110, I teach food thief a lesson. When I was still working production line, there was one coworker who liked to steal my food. It's not a big deal if it's just some taste test, but one day, this guy decides to steal my freaking fried chicken ball with cheese inside. Not just one, but three of them, that make my rice and side dish unbalanced. He even had the audacity to brag how good it was. So that weekend, I go buy wasabi paste and stuffed it inside chicken balls with a lot of it. Yes, I love wasabi, so why not? Next day, I hear something bang on the locker in the production line where we keep our stuff, and what I found was that food thief twitching on the floor. Maybe it's too much for him to handle. Lunch break comes, and I got called to HR because the prank I did endangered co-worker, and I got a write-up. I brush it off with, I didn't prank anyone. That was my lunch, and also show him that I can eat that prank thing just fine. The food theft got a write-up, and I got off with just a verbal warning. And my food never got stolen again. OP put wasabi in their own food in their own locker. They didn't put arsenic in there, so I don't even see why OP should have gotten a write-up. Just because OP likes really spicy stuff? They get a write-up for that? Seems a little messed up to me. And our final story of the day is by, hmm, how about this? Enjoy your wet laundry. This happened when I was in college the better part of a decade ago. I was doing laundry in our dorm. We had a washer and a dryer at the end of our hall. Now, there were a lot of us in that hall, so I was always super conscientious and set alarms to be sure that I was never just letting my stuff sit in the dryer. Anyway, I walk over to get my laundry after my alarm went off. Which, by the way, I always set the alarm early so I got there before the cycle was up. And lo, I found my wet laundry piled on top of the dryer. Some jerk had taken my laundry out of the dryer sometime very close to the start of the cycle. Because apparently theirs was so much more important. I will not stand for this. I scoop their clothes up, walk to the exit a few feet away, and dump their laundry outside the door. Good thing it was raining. I would probably do the exact same thing myself. Just the fact that somebody went into the dryer and pulled your clothes out and just sat them over there, it kind of feels a little violating, not gonna lie. Am I weird for that? Hey, that's nature's free washing machine. They get to go for a second cycle. And then once they're done, once they take their clothes out of the nature's washing machine, they can pop it right back into the dryer. What a perfect time for that absolute jerk. 
But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today, so if you have a favorite story of the day, let me know which story and why in the comments down below. But besides that, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like, and if you haven't, subscribe and turn notifications on so you'll never miss an upcoming video. No matter what you do, whether it's just viewing the video, liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, I appreciate the heck out of it. Every little thing that you do helps the channel grow that much more and I can't thank you enough for it. So until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll be right here next time on the Storytime channel.